what is going on guys so today we're going to be completely bleeding the cooling system on this e36 i just finished rebuilding the cooling system and we need to pretty much bleed it so a couple things to note before we start number one i do have the car raised up in the air the front is up the passenger side is higher than the driver's side for those of you guys who are bleeding your cars for the first time or often have trouble bleeding it properly you might want to try this getting the front end up and more specifically getting the right side where the expansion tank is higher off the ground than the driver's side where the expansion tank is not simply because it prompts air bubbles to get out of the system a little bit quicker now that being said most cars that i bleed i bleed them completely on the ground so you do not have to have the car up in the air to be able to bleed it properly. You can completely bleed it properly with the car sitting straight on the ground as it is. You don't need to lift the front end. So to answer the question, no, you do not have to lift the front end. It just makes it a little bit easier. And for those of you guys who haven't done this before or it's your first time or you have trouble bleeding, it's going to make it a little bit easier. Now, as far as tools and fluids go, all we're going to need is a little flathead screwdriver to mess with the bleed screw. I do have a gallon of BMW blue coolant and a gallon of distilled water over there. If you're going to be mixing coolant with water, use distilled water. Do not use sink water or any other kind of water. Distilled water doesn't have all the minerals that causes engine damage and cylinder head damage and promotes you know, rotting of the cylinder head and all that stuff. Aside from that, I have a couple extra gallons of BMW blue. I kind of just stock it at my house here, but in case I do need more, I have extra so now I always like to start bleeding the cooling system without really bleeding the cooling system so I will add as much coolant into the system as it'll take with with the motor off pretty much so pretty much for the duration of the bleeder we're just gonna be playing with the bleed screw and filling up the reservoir I'm going to start my pre bleed by filling up the reservoir you hear some air bubbles start to come up. Now if you crack the bleed screw while you're filling it up, you will notice that you'll hear air rushing out of the system. Also, if you watch the coolant level as you're kind of airing it up, you'll notice that it will continuously drop. So we're just going to sit here and add as much coolant as we can, as much as it'll take. Yeah, so you can see the level dropping. And that's what we want. And while you're doing this, you could squeeze the lower hose and the upper hose by hand. Just to see if it'll take a little bit more. So as I'm squeezing the upper hose, I can feel it and I can hear it adding water to the system. So the level's dropping just a little bit as I do that. Alright, so once the cooling system has taken as much coolant as it can just by pretty much air bleeding it without the motor on, we're going to go ahead and start this thing up. But before we do that, so we're going to turn the AC off and we're going to turn the heater up completely. So in addition to turning the heater up like this, you also want to spin this guy all the way to red. And then we're going to crank that up and then fire it up. So now with it running, we're pretty much just gonna sit here and continuously add coolant. So as it's running, the coolant level is slowly gonna sort of drop. It's gonna drop mainly when the thermostat opens, but we're pretty much just gonna stand here and continuously add fluid to the system until it stops taking fluid. So I just fired it up and the level hasn't dropped at all yet, but it, it slowly will. 
So while we're watching and waiting, we're gonna wanna keep an eye on the temperature gauge and the temp that the AC for the heater is blowing at. When it's fully bled and up to temp, the heater should be blowing nice and hot if your heater was working fine before. So it's been idling for a minute or two. The reservoir level hasn't dropped at all yet, but the thermostat is not open yet. The temp gauge is starting to lift off of cold. Air is still blowing cold. I have my bleed screw cracked, which is hanging out for now. And I can feel the upper hose getting warm. The lower hose is still cold, so. Now is also a good time to check for leaks if you did any coolant work, such as replacing thermostat water pump. But whenever I do cooling system bleeds, I kind of just bounce back between feeling the temp in the car and watching the temp gauge and watching the level in the reservoir just to make sure that it is where it needs to be. Again, I do have the bleed screw popped open for now. When it gets hot, you will start seeing some coolant come flying out of this thing, which is good. When you have consistent coolant coming out of this is when you know there's no more air bubbles in the radiator. still not blowing 100% hot. It's a little bit warmer than it was, but it's still cold, it's not hot yet. All right, so the radiator hose, the lower hose is nice and hot, the upper hose is nice and hot. We've been at temp for probably 10 or 15 minutes. The heater's blowing warm and it's no longer taking coolant. So it's gotten to the point where it's just sitting at the same level. So now we're gonna go take it on a test drive. So I'm going to close the bleeder screw. And we're gonna install the radiator cap. Now, I'm a little suspicious that there might still be air bubbles in the system and that it's not blood fully yet, but we'll deal with that on the test drive. So when you're going on the test drive, we're just gonna take it around the block. We're not gonna go do anything insane. The one thing to note on the test drive is that the coolant temp gauge should stay exactly right there. It should not move at all. Now, in the case that it's not bled completely, as soon as you start to see, see that climb a little bit from off center, you're gonna wanna pull over. You can shut the car off. We're gonna crack the bleed screw, air is probably gonna come out, and then we're gonna close it again, open the radiator cap and top off the reservoir, and you're just gonna pretty much just keep driving until it pretty much just stops climbing just that little bit, shut off, bleed, let the air perch out, add coolant, and pretty much repeat until the thing is solid. So once you can drive pretty much the remainder of your test drive without the temp gauge climbing at all and it's staying steady, that's when we're gonna go ahead and say it's bled. Now the one thing to note is you should be checking the coolant after you do this for the next few days. So even though the system might be bled properly and it holds temp just perfectly fine, it might, when it's cold, take a little bit more coolant into the system. So for the next few days after it's bled completely, pop the hood, check the coolant level, top it off as you need to for the next few days and then once it stops taking coolant after it's been driven and is being completely cold, that's when we can say that it's truly bled. On my little test drive, I'm gonna take my screwdriver and a bottle of coolant, and that's pretty much all we're gonna need. So because the cooling system hasn't been under pressure yet, because we just put the radiator cap on, we have to drive for a little bit so it will build pressure. So we're just gonna go for a nice drive and see if that temp starts to climb at all. Heater's blowing nice and hot now. That's a really good sign. That's exactly what we want. So I've been driving for about three or four minutes and that temp gauge is not moving at all. So by this point, if it was going to start that little overheat thing I was talking about, it would have done it already. So if you're going on your test drive and that temp gauge starts to move just a little bit upwards, just pull over, shut the motor off, crack the bleed screw till coolant solidly starts coming out of that screw, and then top it off with coolant. And then throw the cap on, close the screw, and go for another drive. 
and just keep driving it and keep cycling it until all of that air gets out of the system. And after a test drive, it's always not a bad idea to crack the screw just a little bit. So did you see that? But aside from that, it's pretty much bled. All right, so good luck to you guys bleeding your cooling systems. I know it can be a little frustrating, but if you take your time and you're patient with it, it's really not that bad. All right, so some parting words for the cooling system bleed. Um, number one is just gonna be take your time. The car will bleed on its own time, not on yours. So the mistake that I see most often with bleeding cooling systems is just honestly not taking the time to bleed it properly. And you know, these things take a while. This bleed probably took me a little over half an hour or something like that. If you try and rush it, that's when you start having mistakes. So let the car do its thing. Let it go through the motions. Let the heater fully heat up. Let the car sit at 10 for a little while. Make sure everything's solid. You're pretty much just babysitting it while it's doing all the work. The second thing is, is so these cars take about two and a half, little under three gallons of coolant for a six cylinder car with a full factory cooling system and a working heater. The amount of coolant the pre-bleed takes I've, I've bled the coolant system on these cars the same way for years, and the amount of coolant that it will take on the pre-bleed, I've noticed has varied between cars. So on this bleed, this car took about almost two gallons on the pre-bleed, and so when we actually did the bleed with the motor on, it only took maybe two or three reservoir fills before it was satisfied enough to temp and holding temp properly. On the contrary, on my bucket, if you guys saw the build of the, uh, the custom S52 we built for that car, the pre-bleed on that car only took about a gallon. And so the rest of the bleed, when the car, when the motor was running and we were bleeding it thoroughly, it probably took about another gallon and a half, when this car only took like maybe two or three reservoirs full. So my point is, is if you're bleeding your cooling system and when the car is running enough to temp and it's taking a lot more coolant than just two or three reservoirs, that's completely normal. It might be completely normal unless you have a leak. So while you're bleeding it, keep an eye out as far as the work you did. Make sure your thermostat's not leaking, your water pump's not leaking, any of your hoses are leaking, any of that stuff. Because if it's leaking, you're pretty much just wasting coolant. And while you're bleeding it, after you just did work is the time to fix it, not later. So if you have something that's leaking while you're bleeding it, just stop bleeding it, fix the leak, and then keep going at it. So again, I've had cars that once the pre-bleed is done, it only takes like half a gallon. I've had other cars where it takes another gallon and a half. So it's going to take as much coolant as it needs to on its own schedule. So if you're sitting there just continuously adding and adding and adding coolant and it's not leaking, that's good. That's normal. And if you pre-bled it thoroughly and it's just not taking a lot of coolant, but you added a lot of coolant during the pre-bleed, during the pre-bleed, then that could be normal too, you know? And another note to that is watch the coolant level after you have bled it, you know, for the next few days. When I finished the bleed on this car, it was earlier today, it was probably about five or six hours ago, and since then... So we bled this car probably five or six hours ago, and when it was being bled, when I shut the car off when it was up temp and warm, the coolant level was at the top of the reservoir. Now, right now, the coolant level is, is down there. So it got a little bit lower. That's actually right about the cold line. That's not bad. So that's what I mean by keep your eye on the coolant level. So who knows if this could have taken a lot less or a lot more. So I'm just going to keep my eye on it for the next few days and make sure that the level stays where it needs to, just to make sure everything is solid. So take your time, be thorough, make sure everything is properly done. Be sure to ask questions if you have them down in the comments. I would love to answer questions for you guys. You guys know that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Keep it fresh and I'll see you guys later. Search but you stay lost We are